So we're gonna go ahead and do some uh, transition metal binary ionic nomenclature practice. And first up, we have cadmium phosphide. So with any transition metals, I am going to have to calculate uh, oxidative state, that charge for my cation, so that I can uh, figure out what I am going to actually need to use for my subscript. Unfortunately for me, cadmium is uh, not going to tell me its charge because it is part of cadzenagel. So I need to go ahead and look on the periodic table and see if I can figure out what its charge is. I told you that it kind of forms a stair-step line for uh, cadmium, zinc, silver, and aluminum for what its charge is. And cadmium is in that, or in that second stair, I should say, which means that cadmium is going to have a positive two charge. And cadmium's symbol is going to be CD. And I know that it's going to be positive two. Phosphide is secretly phosphorus. So phosphorus is in column 5A, which means that it is going to have five valence electrons. So that means it's going to steal one, two, three valence electrons. Stealing is bad, so my phosphorus is going to have a negative three charge. Then I can go ahead and crisscross charges for subscripts. So cadmium is going to get a three subscript from phosphorus and phosphorus is going to get a two subscript from cadmium. The ratio two to three is the lowest possible, so I can go ahead and stop there. Tungsten four oxide. Tungsten is going to be in my transition block. Its symbol is W. And tungsten four means that I am going to have a charge of plus four. And oxide is going to be from the periodic table. I will find oxygen here, and I see that it is in column six, which means it has six valence electrons, which means that I am going to go ahead and steal one, two. Stealing is bad, so I'm gonna have a negative two charge. Now, whenever I go ahead and write them together and switch charges for subscripts, oxygen is going to give tungsten a subscript of two, and tungsten is gonna give oxygen is subscript of four. Now the ratio of two to four can be simplified. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna simplify it to one to two, which means that my final formula would be WO2. My next set of compounds is going to be titanium three sulfide. Titanium is going to be TI on the periodic table. And titanium three means that I have a charge of three. And sulfide, I need to go ahead and figure out who sulfide is and what its charge is. So sulfide is going to have the uh, symbol of S, and it's going to be in that sixth column, which means it's going to steal two valence electrons to get to eight. Stealing is bad, so sulfur is going to have a negative two charge. Whenever I write them together, titanium and sulfur, and I switch charges for subscripts, sulfur's two becomes titanium's two, titanium's three becomes sulfur's three, and then I'm just gonna check to make sure that this is my lowest common multiple here, or this is my lowest common ratio is what I should say. So titanium two, sulfur three, the ratio two to three is already the lowest uh, possible ratio, so I can go ahead and stop. Silver nitride, I have run into yet another one that is not gonna give me my charge. How sad. I need to find silver on my periodic table. Silver is going to be AG. In my Kadzenagel stair step, it is the first stair, which means that silver, AG, is going to have a charge of plus one. And then I need to find nitride, AKA nitrogen. Nitrogen is in column 5A, which means it has five valence electrons, which means it is going to go ahead and steal three valence electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and say N and then three negative, and then write them together, AG and N. Nitrogen's uh, charge of negative three, that is going to make me have to have three positive one silvers to counteract that negative three charge from nitrogen. I only need one nitrogen. That charge of one becomes nitrogen subscript, which I don't need to write because, you know, lazy. Copper one nitride, I need to find copper. Copper is going to be element number 29. It is going to be Cu. 
and copper one means I have a charger plus one. And then nitride is going to be secretly nitrogen. Nitrogen is in column five, which means it has five valence electrons, which means I am going to have to steal three valence electrons in order to get to eight. Then I'm gonna go ahead and smoosh them together. And I will give uh, copper my three from nitrogen. And nitrogen, I will give the one from copper, which I will not write. So copper one nitride will be Cu3N. Copper two nitride. Now we're seeing different uh, types of ions. And we're seeing that copper can, again, form two different ions at least. Copper one had a charge of one. Copper two is going to have a charge of two. Nitride, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and pull nitrides. Uh, charge from my previous problem and then I'm gonna go ahead and smoosh them together copper's subscript will come from nitrogen's charge nitrogen's charge is three which means that my copper subscript has to be three and nitrogen's subscript comes from copper's charge copper's charge is two which means that nitrogen's subscript will be two Okay, last set of uh, name to formula. So here I have nickel to bromide. So nickel I need to find on the periodic table. That is going to be element number 28. And its symbol is Ni. Nickel 2 means I have a charge of plus 2. Bromide is secretly bromine. And its symbol is Br. Bromine is in column 7A, which means it has seven valence electrons. So it has seven, it wants eight, so it is going to steal one. Stealing is bad, so bromine is going to be Br and then negative one. I'm going to write them together. And then I'm going to switch charges for subscripts. Nickels two becomes bromines two, and bromines one becomes nickels one, but I don't have to write it, so NiBr2 is going to be my correct formula since the ratio one to two cannot be simplified any further. Next is going to be uh, cobalt three phosphide. So I need to find cobalt on the periodic table. That is gonna be element number 27 on the periodic table. Its symbol is CO. And since it is not part of Katzenagel, it's going to be oh so nice to me and it's going to tell me the charge right in the name. Cobalt 3 means that I am going to have a charge of positive 3. And then phosphide is secretly phosphorus. Phosphorus is in column 5A. That means it has 5 valence electrons and it will steal 3 to get to a total of 8 valence electrons. Stealing is bad, so phosphorus's charge is going to be negative 3. Whenever I go ahead and smoosh those together, I am going to exchange charges for subscripts. So phosphorus is three becomes cobalt's three. Cobalt's three becomes phosphorus is three. And then I'm gonna check to see if I need to uh, simplify it all. The ratio three to three can be simplified to one to one. So I will go ahead and rewrite it as just C-O-P. So those are all of my names to formulas, and now I'm going to go ahead and practice going from the formula to the name. This involves that actual calculation of, uh, the, uh, of the actual oxidative state for my cation, unless it is part of Kadzenagel. Silver is actually part of Kadzenagel, and that is who AG is. So I see AG on my periodic table, that's silver, and it is part of my Kadzenagel stair step. So I can just go ahead and just call this silver. I do not need to tell you what its charge is because it is special and it only has one option. Therefore, it cannot be anything else. I just need to figure out who S is. I'm gonna find it on the periodic table. I'm gonna find sulfur. Oh, hey, look. And I just need to go ahead and uh, transfer it from its element name to its ion name. So I'm going to go ahead and end it in ide, which is going to turn this into sulfide. So silver sulfide is the correct answer for the name of AG2S. MnO2, dang it, Mn. I don't think Mn is part of Kadzenagel. 
And MN is going to be manganese. So this bugger is not going to let me just cheat and just assume that you know what its charge is going to be. So that means I actually have to uh, do that math. So I'm going to go ahead and label cation anion. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give myself parentheses because I know that I'm going to have to have them since manganese is a transition metal and it is not part of cadzenagel. And then I know that O is oxygen. Oxygen's anion name is going to be oxide. So this is going to be manganese something oxide. And now I just need to figure out what that something is. So remember, initially, I'm going to go ahead and do my anion first. My anion, the first thing I need to figure out is what its subscript is. Subscript for oxygen is going to be 2. I need to figure out what my charge for oxygen is. Oxygen is in column 6, which means I have 6 valence electrons, which means I'm going to steal 2 to get to 8. So my charge is going to be negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is going to give me a total charge of negative 4. For my cation, I can go ahead and figure out what my subscript is going to be. I don't see a number there, which means that there is an implied 1. And then my total charge is going to have to be equal and opposite of my anion charge, so I know that this is going to have to be positive 4. I don't know what my individual manganese charge is, so I'm going to have to actually look at this formula to figure it out. But 1 times something is going to equal positive 4, and that something is going to be 4. So from Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, this 4 will become manganese's Roman numeral charge. So I'm going to go ahead and write the Roman numeral for 4. Next, I have VI. V is not going to be part of Cadzenagel, so I do have to actually go ahead and hunker down and figure out what its charge is, but let's figure out who V is in the first place. Ah, V is going to be element number 23 on the periodic table, and it is vanadium. So I know that I'm going to have vanadium. I know that since it is not part of CADS and angle, I have to tell you what the charge is, but I'm not sure what it is yet. And then I know that I need to figure out who I is and what its ion name is. So I is going to be iodine, and iodine's anion name is going to be iodide. And now I just need to figure out what vanadium's charge is. So again, I'm going to start anion versus cation. Okay, my anion for uh, is going to be iodide. The subscript for iodine is going to be 1. Iodine is going to be in column 7A, which means it has 7 valence electrons. So that means it's going to steal 1. So that means its charge is going to be negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. I know that my cation has to have an equal and opposite charge of my anion, so I know that my total cation charge has to be positive 1. I have a total of 1 vanadium. 1 times something is going to give me positive 1. 1 times 1 gives me 1. So from Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I'm going to go ahead and write the Roman numeral for 1 there. Now my next is going to be ZnCl2. Zn is going to be zinc, which is going to be part of cadzenagel. So that means that I do not have to tell you what the charge is. I just have to go ahead and write the name. So we have zinc. I don't have to tell you the charge, so no parentheses are needed. And I just need to figure out who Cl is and what its ion name is. Cl is going to be chlorine. Chlorine's ion name is going to be chloride. So this is just going to be zinc chloride. Last two here, I have HF, who is definitely not in Kazenigl, so I need to go ahead and find HF. Uh, HF is going to be hafnium, and it is going to be element number 72. So hafnium 
is not a representative metal, nor is it part of CADS and Eagle, so that means that I have to go ahead and give myself some parentheses, and then I need to figure out who chlorine, or who CL is, sorry, give it away. CL is going to be chlorine, and chlorine's uh, anion name is going to be chloride. Okay, and now I need to go ahead and do this math to figure out what the charge for hafnium is going to be. Okay, my subscript for my anion is going to be four. Chlorine is in column 7A, which means it has seven valence electrons, which means I am going to go ahead and steal one. Stealing is bad. My charge for my chlorine is gonna be negative one. Four times negative one is gonna give me negative four. Equal and opposite for negative four is going to give me positive four for my cation. My subscript for hafnium is going to be one. One times something is gonna equal four. Four, one times four equals four. From Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I will go ahead and write the Roman numeral four there. Here is my very last example. I have Y in, Y is going to be yttrium. It is definitely not in my Cadzenagel land, so I do need to figure out what yttrium's charge is going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and write yttrium. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself parentheses to remind myself I need to do the math. And then I need to figure out for N, who N is. Ah, N is nitrogen. And nitrogen's anion name is going to be nitride. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Anion versus cation. Okay, my subscript for my anion is going to be one. Nitrogen is in column 5A, which means it has five valence electrons. So I'm gonna steal one, two, three to get to eight. So my charge for my anion is gonna be negative three. One times negative three is going to give me negative three. Equal and opposite for my total charge for my cation, so that's gonna be positive three. My subscript for my cation is also going to be one. One times what is three? Well, three. From Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I just need to go back and add in that oxidative state for yttrium, and I am done.